The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. This content has been removed due to copyright restrictions. See the Readings and Viewings page for information about this material. That zigzag dance, I think we missed at the very beginning of the film. At least the audio wasn't working yet, it just, but you saw it later. The, the movement the male makes, it's a fixed action pattern he makes in order to lead a female. Usually a female he has picked out from a group uh, to his nest. Uh, and it's when the female sees that, if she's ready, to lay eggs, she is induced to follow him. But the cause of her behavior is the sight of his behavior. So you saw an example of the use of dummy stimuli with the females of different the models of females of different shapes. And you saw their analysis of the purpose. They were looking for why that's adaptive. And the uh, fairly obvious reason was the larger females, the more larger swollen belly and so forth, uh, have more eggs. So it benefits the male to choose such a female because then he can inseminate larger numbers and should it result in greater number of offspring. And by the way, the purpose, I mean, if, if the animal was conscious, or if you're dealing with humans and you say, well, if you want to know the purpose of something, just ask the person. But it doesn't work. You don't have to be aware of the purpose. The purpose is the evolutionary purpose. It's what's evolved. And you don't have to be aware of it all. In fact, you may give totally different reasons. You would give proximate reasons, but not the reasons where the whole uh, behavior pattern evolved. And then you saw the study of development where they varied the orphan orphans and the naturally reared fish and uh, how they differed in their anti-predator behavior, their escape behavior. Apparently, the early experience plays an important role in shaping their later responses. So it's their patterns of escape from the attacking fish is not totally unlearned. It has a learned component as well. And you learn the answers to these from that film also. Uh, by looking at the fish that have evolved in isolation from each other for long enough, they were able to see differences that have evolved with that because of different... Uh, in one case, some of the sticklebacks were initially ocean-going, and then they became isolated in the smaller uh, lake that became freshwater lake. And you learn why the male stickleback fish drives the female away, because she's cannibalistic. The behavior of these animals, of course, evolves, involves the behavior of both male and female. An individual female can benefit by cannibalizing eggs because most of the eggs she will be eating aren't hers. And if she now can lay a lot more eggs, she has a greater chance of reproducing or reproducing a larger number of individuals. But, of course, that's not in the male's favor. He wants to preserve those eggs that he has uh, inseminated and he is the one in charge of the safety of those eggs until they hatch. The female play in this were sorry? So uh, what does the male eat? What does the male eat? He doesn't eat eggs. <laughs> you know, they eat very small Organisms and vegetation, but I'm not sure of the details. There's plenty online about sticklebacks. That would be a pretty easy thing if you want details. Okay, so next time we'll be talking about Kinbergen's studies of birds, kittiwake gulls.